Good morning and welcome to the Financial Doctor Show. My name is Annie Oslai and I'm delighted to introduce you to today's guest, the lovely, brilliant and most beautiful Victoria Guidov. Victoria, how are you doing today? Thank you so much, Annie, for letting me join you today. It's such a pleasure and honor. It's wonderful to finally get to chat with you in person. I'm good. My pleasure. So those of you who have been following the show, you know that I am actually showcasing amazing musicians and Victoria is one of them. She's a Danish born soprano and she is trained as an opera singer, but she has been venturing outside of that genre quite a bit. She has been singing in musicals, in epic songs, in crossovers, the whole nine yard. But why am I talking about it? So Victoria, why don't you share us about your journey? Thank you so much for wanting to know about me. Well, uh, where to start? I've had quite the adventurous life, uh, moving uh, back and forth between Europe and the States and then ended up in Canada. I've really spent a third of my life in these different places. Uh, I immigrated to the United States from uh, Copenhagen, Denmark, from that area with my parents and my brother when I was seven. And uh, we lived in Virginia and then my father's company moved us to California. So I lived in San Jose for uh, about five years. And then my dad wanted to work for Boeing, the uh, um, airplane manufacturer up in uh, Everett, Washington State near Seattle. And so that's where we ended up. And I spent most of my junior high and high school years there. And it was a, a really wonderful time, spending time in the mountains, hiking and out on the coast in the ocean. So it was really great. I eventually became a scuba diver. So that was fun. And that's something I really miss is being on the West Coast and being in that sort of wild um, natural surrounding where uh, Ontario is a little more um, humble in that respect. But Canada certainly has a lot to offer. I just would love to do some more traveling and uh, and see more of Canada when there's time. Yeah. But so after high school, I ended up moving back to Denmark. And my goal was to get into the Royal Danish Conservatory of Music and hopefully eventually uh, into the opera program there. I ran into some snags. Uh, my high school diploma wasn't acceptable. So I ended up studying privately with a wonderful teacher there. And eventually, alongside of that was working uh, with a singing partner, we had a musical highlight show. So I did a lot of Phantom of the Opera and Les Miserable highlights and uh, from Sunset Boulevard and, and other musicals that were a lot of fun. Yes, yeah, so it was so much fun uh, going back to Denmark. After high school, I had some wonderful experiences in music, as I mentioned, musical theater, and I started also working with certain gentlemen on uh, dance music. And so we were sort of collaborating. I was writing lyrics and uh, laying down some vocals, and that would have led to something. Uh, I actually had someone approach me about a record contract back then. Um, with that music. And uh, in regard to the music, I wasn't able to fully pursue that portion of, of the uh, industry at that time, but I still dabbled in it and had fun. And then I ended up working and singing at uh, one of the oldest theme parks in the world. I think Denmark has probably the two oldest. We have Tivoli, which inspired Disneyland. And uh, that's in the center of Copenhagen. And then we have, the park is called Bakken, B-A-K-K-E-N. It just means the hill. And it's located in the King's Hunting Forest in Klampenbo, Denmark. And uh, uh, there are deer all around. There's all these wonderful trees. People take horse carriages through the woods. There's this beautiful old hunting castle, you know, just outside the park. It has the world's oldest wooden roller coaster and all these wonderful little booths and restaurants and um, entertainment stalls that have gone back in families their, in their family histories, um, you know, hundreds of years. The, I think the park goes back 500 years. So it's really kind of neat that I was a, a part of that and a part of an original musical um, about it and uh, performed both with highlights and also that program. So that was a lot of fun. And eventually I felt the need to go back to the States for multiple reasons. And uh, I feel it saved my life in more ways than one. And although I missed my family, and again, this is where I mentioned earlier in our conversation, our private conversation, that it's been difficult to sort of have such separate lives from my closest family, but it's been adventurous at the same time. And going back to the States was good. And I had a chance to get involved with symphony orchestras and did a lot of work in Seattle and um, musical theater and uh, at the Fifth Avenue Theater in downtown Seattle, which was fun with a cast that had some Broadway actors and singers. And we ended up doing our rehearsal in the Seattle Trade Tower. And this was during 9-11. 
And so we heard the news that morning and then had, having to head into rehearsal was kind of a scary situation and wondering whether or not we were going to be a target as well uh, in Seattle. We didn't know if it was sort of every big city in the States at the time that was getting attacked. But uh, it was extremely tough for some of the cast members. They had family and friends that worked in the trade centers in New York. And so it was a very intense time, but I was blessed to be a part of A Little Night Music, um, Sondheim's wonderful musical. And we had, we had a very great cast. And so it was, it was an intense experience, but it was wonderful as well. And, and it led to so many other things that I, I'm very blessed to have uh, been able to be a part of. Eventually I met my Canadian husband on the internet, <laughs> which was great. My brother met his wife, his Russian wife in Germany while he was stationed in Germany, met her on the same website. And he kind of said, you know, why don't you just check it out? And I thought, ah, oh, that's kind of silly. You know, I'd rather meet somebody face to face and sort of have that connection, you know, <laughs> something a little more romantic. Back then, it was kind of silly to even imagine, you know, meeting someone, but it really opened up the whole world in a way, which was exciting. And I, I was my heart was open to, to meeting anyone anywhere, really, because, you know, I've always been spontaneous and a little bit impulsive, <laughs> a little, <laughs> and uh, romantic. And so uh, when I met my husband, it was funny. I'll, I'll tell you the whole story some other time. But eventually, we had a whirlwind romance and met and got engaged the day after we met. And literally, uh, weeks later, several weeks later, he flew back and we drove a U-Haul across the country with my cat at the time, Zeta, and my betta fish in a cranberry juice container and snuck the cat in and out of hotel rooms <laughs> and uh, had a really fun time on the road. And yeah, ended up in London, Ontario, where his family is all established. And that's where we were for the first seven years back in 2005. And I had a chance to work with some orchestras there and, and some lovely people. And then eventually we found this beautiful, I, okay, I've always been a romantic and I've always dreamt of having a, a Victorian house specifically, one with lilac trees. And it just, you know, sort of needed to have this romantic feel to it and uh, big rooms. And we always wanted to build a recording studio. My husband is a recording and sound engineer by trade. And so for him, that was and is his big dream. And that's something that we didn't know that we had in common when we started chatting. I had no idea he was uh, into music production and recording. And he had um, a friend, a well-known friend that's big in the music industry here in Canada, Stefan Macchio. Uh, he actually recorded Stefan back before Stefan was invited by David Foster to go and do uh, music with him out, uh, out West. So uh, that was really neat that once I started getting to know Brian during that first conversation, we couldn't believe all the things we had in common and our faith was similar and our, our outlook on life. And we were both really sort of um, driven to do exciting things with our music. And we just thought, wow, well, this has to be God. You know, he had to have brought us together. And uh, well, 16 years later, <laughs> we're still here. So, and it was great. So we found this I found this amazing house. I think I found it on Kijiji. I think it was Kijiji. And it was a back and forth thing. And it was, it, it ended up being a private sale. We finally got the house. And just all these things happened and just really fell into place. And we ended up in this wonderful house, which is a 1880 Victorian, two-story yellow brick Victorian house. And our big dream and uh, what we're working on and what Brian's been working so hard on for the last several years has been to make a recording studio in half of the house in the downstairs, uh, two big rooms. So it's going to be a pro uh, level studio and uh, we're really excited about it. I think he currently has the name The Vic, V-I-C, uh, picked out for it. I don't know. He might change it, but uh, we thought that was fun because, well, Victoria and it's a Victorian house. So the Vic, we thought that was kind of fun. It's going to be really cool. And we, we hope it will bring a, a really peaceful and kind of cool vibe to, to come and record here. We're going to have, you know, we have antiques and we have all our great furnishings. We're going to have mood lighting and being it very traditional, not making it too modern. I know he likes the mix of the modern, but I'm like, no, we got to have Edison bulbs and we have to have dimmers and we have to have candlelight, and, you know, all this cool stuff, like a nice rug and leather couch and 
So yeah, we're, we're really looking forward to that. Dad. And we hope to bring in some of our local music community members to come in and do some mastering and recording here. Brian's really great at mastering and recording and, uh, and mixing. I'm good at editing and things like that. So uh, we hope that people will maybe use this um, studio in the future to help with their vocal projects and maybe even small ensembles. Uh, we'll hope to have a, a really great piano at some point, but in the meantime, I think we'll have a, a really good um, weighted keyboard with some great uh, plugins that'll mimic some of the greatest pianos you can imagine. So that'll be really fun. That's something we enjoy working on. You know what? This is quite a story. I was just listening to it and I was mesmerized. Completely inspirational. You use the word adventurous. I think you don't even describe nearly as what you just went through. So you were really sharing with us how when you were seven, you guys moved to the States. And then just after finishing high school, you moved back to Denmark. But then you moved back to the States. Somewhere in between, you have been the queen of that amusement park and then performing in musicals and everything else and then symphony orchestras and somewhere in between you guys landed at the Victorian house that you always were dreaming about Victoria and the Victorian house and of course somewhere in between you also married your prince so just after <laughs> one day of dating something like that uh, we, <laughs> we chatted online for hours, like we had the three hour difference. And so it was, you know, you get home from work and you'd start chatting, you'd do the typing. And then we were on the phone, either over the internet or on the actual phone, sometimes for up to, I think one time was, you wouldn't even believe it, like 14 hours. I don't know if that's even possible. And we're like, what did we talk about back then? Because now sometimes you look at each other, you're like, what's going on? What's going on with your life? Don't you have anything to share? You know, we have these like really long, quiet moments. And when we drove across the country, I thought we'd be chatterboxes, but we actually had really long periods of being okay with just like relaxing and not having to talk you know, talk all the time. So, um, yeah, it's fun. You know, we, we, we are very different in some ways, uh, but in other ways we really complement each other. And I think he's been that sort of, sort of sure rock and that loyal person in my life. Believe me when I say I've had a, you know, a roller coaster ride and, um, uh, my faith, uh, and God is what has brought me through and, uh, my love of music, my passion, my feeling that, I'm here for a reason and just the, the joy and the, the hope that I get from sharing and creating music and, and positive uh, messages with other people and meeting wonderful people like yourself. That's what keeps me going. and I'm grateful. So actually on your website, I yeah. have a quote that resonated so deeply with me that I'd like to share it today with the world. So this is what you say, and this is coming from you. Music is more than sound. It is the voice of love, of consciousness, the truth that feeds our spirit and connects us to that which is beyond boundaries. I have found this was just so deep and so beautiful. And I find it also almost mysterious in terms of how you and I connected and how you approached me and invited me to that amazing Facebook group of yours, which is the Opera Voice Artist support for fellow creative friends and we will be talking about it in a mere moment but if you don't mind really exploring a little bit more the meaning of this quote because to me it goes right in but I want to make sure that whoever is listening to this they really also understand where you are coming from and then from then on maybe we can just go into how you are truly thinking about something much bigger than you and how you're really supporting others as well well thank you very much for reading that quote and hearing it, you know, sort of, it reminds me of the importance of staying connected spiritually to my faith and, and the whole reason that I believe that I'm here at this time in history and that we all have a destiny to fulfill. Music, I think, is that one universal language that one thing that connects us and that is probably one of the most powerful forces that humans have ever engaged in, discovered, been blessed with, to create, to imagine, to think about. And uh, I do believe it's breathed into us by the creator. 
I don't think it's something we developed or evolution sort of plugged into us. We're the only creatures that engage in this type of activity, as far as we know. And I think it, it is that beautiful, deep part of ourself that we share as creative people. And it's not just musicians. I guess it can span to different types of arts and, and creative outlets, writing and painting and, and uh, sculpting and expression and dance and all of these wonderful things, the, the visual arts, all of these things that sentient beings um, do and feel fulfilled by that uh, is so unique to us. And I do think that when I, when I think of positive, encouraging music with good messages and good vibrations and light-filled, hope-filled messages, because there's the opposite as well, right? And I think we have the choice. We have to make a conscious decision. Do we engage and use our gifts, our God-given gifts, I believe, our talents, our abilities? Do we use them selfishly or do we use them experimentally in a way where we dabble in the dark shadows of, of this and, and inspire fear and uh, anger and, and uh, negativity? Or do we use it to create words of and images and feelings of light and inspiration and lightness and to encourage people and, and lift them out of that dark because there is so much dark in the world. And that's where I do think that there is a spiritual connection to music. And it, it does maybe even transcend Earth's boundaries. It goes through the universe. I think the, the, we know that sound and thought even travels beyond our bodies and outside of, of the Earth. What I wonder does the Earth sound like emotionally to the rest of the universe? Is, do we create chaos or is, is, there, is there something beautiful as well coming outside of that? And, and does the rest of the universe feel that? Does it pick up on it? I don't know. I definitely think that God is watching and hoping that we would be taking our responsibility very seriously um, as artistic people, because I think we do have such an impact in this world. Like I said, you can either be an impact for the negative, the yin and the yang is there, right? You have that choice. You, you can either, you can either lift the world up you know, there's so much chaos and, and pain and suffering as it is. I think we have one life, one chance to make a difference. And I think we shouldn't spoil it. We shouldn't uh, waste it. We shouldn't take it for granted at all in any way whatsoever. And that's why relationships with people are also so important to, to realize that every interaction you have is an opportunity to spread seeds of love and, and, and kindness in other people's lives. And uh, sometimes they leave our lives. We don't necessarily, we're not meant to save the world necessarily. We're not just meant to, to stay with certain people, but I think it's a learning experience. And that's why I accept, I'm, I'm to the point now where I'm starting to look back a little bit on my life and not be so depressed at times and think, oh, so much wasted time or I, I made so many mistakes, but to really see the bigger picture from a spiritual perspective and, and realize that we are on a journey. This is a journey. and how are we supposed to know? We don't have the blueprint. Nobody's, we have sensations, we have feelings, we have, you know, we react to things, but to, to start to, to just forgive ourselves and say, it's okay that we're just taking it one step at a time and try to embrace whatever you're being shown in that moment to learn from it in a positive sense. And then to take that and integrate it into what you do uh, with your life. And for me, that's something that inspires me um, and, and helps strengthen me and gives me different colors in my art, uh, in my music and, and collaborations with other, other people. But it's extremely important for me not to compromise because like I said, I've, I've experienced some very dark people and times in my life and I don't wanna spend any more time staying in the enemy camp. In other words, I want to reside in God's blessings and, and, and in the light and, and help to promote that in the world. Does that sound silly? <laughs>
In fact, you know what, I'm just, you know, I'm just really absorbing what you're saying. And you are sharing such unbelievable deep messages that I like to really just put my two cents to it, because I think this conversation is so deep and so beautiful. So I'm grateful for you for totally going off <laughs> what we wanted to discuss, because I think this is just as equally important. And I'm, I promise we will be going back to the music component as well. But here's the thing. Okay. So you talked about the spiritual thing and you said, okay, you really, really hope that whoever is watching what's happening on earth, they see something beautiful as well. And I think this is where people like you need to be heard because people like you are the light bringers. And just as you said, there's so much darkness, especially now. After over a year of the pandemic, various degrees of lockdowns, people are becoming desperate. They have lost their jobs. They've lost their livelihood. Some people got seriously sick. Some people even passed, right? So then the question is, okay, what is really beyond of what we see? Is there something beyond of what we see? And so if you start believing in something, there is something that is bigger than you. That's when you are able to resonate with it and resonate on this much higher frequency and be the light for others. And and I firmly believe what you said, that music is something divine. It is coming from the divine. And so people like you are the messengers. Artists in my mind are the messengers of that divine thing and channeling it out so that everyone else can actually enjoy it. And so I find it so unfair to the artistic community that you guys have been shut down for over a year now in terms of performances and everything else. But if you really look at what are regular people turning to just to calm themselves or cheer themselves up or just anything, it's music. That's what it is. Everybody needs music. Music is essential. It's part of our being. So from that perspective, I really find it amazing the work that you are doing, Victoria, by not only okay, you can't perform. So what are you doing? Well, you are supporting your fellow artists. You are creating amazing music by collaborating with others, as well as your recent album came out that you collaborated with Joe Blankenberg. And we will be talking about it in a mere moment. And then many other things as well, because you were writing your little poems, your little stories, photographies and everything else all the positive messages that you're putting out there. So so really kudos to you, girlfriend, because you are creating something that is much bigger and that is so needed in the world. So I thank you for that. I really do. And in our private chat before this conversation, you said something that if you give me permission, I like to quote as well. So we were just discussing in terms of if we are not on this planet by supporting others and elevating others and what is the real purpose. And this is what your comment was to that statement. And I absolutely loved it. This is what you said. We ourselves can't help but be blessed, encouraged and lifted up and hopefully loved a bit by the right people when we love and lift others up. It's by God's wonderful design. And so it's very interesting because I think love is contagious, but love comes from within. If there is no love within, how can you love others? So if you are in a war with yourself, how can you create peace outside? So it all starts from within. And that's why it's so important. The mission that you are doing, my love, to create the light for others is, is you have no idea how much valued it is. Oh, thank you so much for saying that. That's so sweet of you. Uh, I think we also, we can lift ourselves out even without realizing it, out of these pits of despair, so to speak. Even when we don't really feel we have the strength to give to somebody else, I find that when you're struggling yourself, lifting someone up, even just a little bit, even just trying to acknowledge that they have pain too. And, and when you see friends hurting, and, and I've, I've spoken to so many people and, and been blessed that the Lord has allowed me to encourage people Uh, both in the good times and also the bad, even the darkest periods of their life, you know, when, when they're thinking of, of, I've heard people say they want to end things. And, you know, you just, you, you panic a little bit and you think this is so much responsibility. You know, I can't just walk away from this. And then you think, gosh, I'm struggling too, at times, how do I 
how do I shine bright enough for the two of us? And God always shows up and, and connects you and takes over and, and gives you that abundance that you didn't think you had when you show up to help someone else, another human being, another being in general, whether it's animals or, or nature or, or, or humans, we, we are lifted up ourselves and it's a two way street blessings. Never are one way street gifts that you have been given abilities. Um, love is a two way street. It's not always returned in the way that we imagine or that, uh, you know, and sometimes it's outright uncomfortable, um, that, you know, you might give love or, or uh, support to someone and you don't feel that they're returning that. And sometimes it does return void, we feel. But there are a lot of things going on in the spiritual realm and under the surface that we're not privy to. We don't see and hear and feel and sense all of these things to the extent that the Lord does. And so I think sometimes we have to just do it on faith. We may not feel we've saved a person or, or, or made a big difference, but really every word and act of love and kindness, I think, is felt. Even like we talked about, sort of like in a really big spiritual sense, the ripples go throughout the earth and it, and it affects people in, in uh, ways that you can't imagine. And hopefully those seeds that you've planted, you know, it's not your job to dig them up and keep saying, well, seeing where the progress is that sometimes you just need to do these things on faith and realize that everything that happens to you, can we try to maybe imagine that it's a divine appointment or at least the relationships that we form, even though they may seem so scary and negative and, or meaningless at the time, like they, they don't have huge significance at the time. Maybe you were meant to be there at that precise moment to take their hand or, smile at them maybe they were going through something horrible and you made that difference in their life and maybe your one kind word or writing them a note to take that extra step to to step outside of that social media filter that we have you know everybody tries to pretend like you know we're all we're, we're doing great and then when someone finally reaches out to you just to, to take that moment and say oh god has given me this responsibility not by accident, but because he trusts me with it. Because I have now been given this privilege and honor to plant a seed of love in that person's life. And maybe that's how it is with, with what we do. Your book writing, um, your inspirational speaking, um, encouraging other people. All the things we do, all our interactions. Maybe there's something deeper going on, something bigger in this fabric that we're all a part of, we're all connected. And um, yeah, I, I really think there's something deeper going on and, and more beautiful than we, than we give everything credit for. It's, it's kind of amazing. You know what? Absolutely. And so something else as well. For me, last year was pivotal, to be quite honest with you, because you mentioned answering the previous question on this one, that sometimes things are happening to you for you that don't look like that they are serving you but at the end of the day we are all learning from it and to be quite honest with you I am so grateful for everything that went on last year because it truly truly helped me to self-reflect and grow and I don't know who else was able to take that opportunity but if you have not been taking that opportunity just start it now because this time that we are living in is really giving us actually the time to take a step back and look from our situation from a different perspective. And that allows us to grow and learn. And that's when I basically finally understood, again, what unconditional love is. And this is all about faith and Bible and the whole nine yard. But at the end of the day, it's also spiritual. and. Many times we love, but we love with expecting something in return. And that is something a little bit with ego, right? But unconditional love doesn't boast, doesn't expect anything in return. It just gives. 
And what is very interesting, and this is where your comment about that everything is interconnected and is coming back, is true. When you do that, you might not receive back from the source where you're giving it, but it's coming from unexpected ways. And that's what I'm seeing you doing as well with your Facebook group by supporting everybody else as well. And I don't know what's the story behind your collaboration with Joe Blankenberg, but you guys just came out with this absolutely amazing, magical album, Sentience. And you were gracious enough to allow me to listen to the entire album. And just before this conversation, I said that when you're listening to it and when I hear your voice, it reminds me of my last European vacation before I moved to Canada, and that was actually in Rome. So when I went to the Vatican and I was sitting down in the 16th chapel at the stairs and I was just really shutting out all the noise and all the people and just really admiring Michelangelo's paintings, that's what it reminds me of, like being right then and there and having this angelic feeling. So I don't know how this, maybe this faith thing came through, maybe the divine thing, maybe it's a combination of all, but if you don't mind sharing that with us, Victoria, that would be great. Wow, that is such a beautiful vision to imagine. And uh, I've been to Italy myself, uh, not to the Sistine Chapel, but I've been uh, to Europe in, in beautiful uh, places of worship. And, and you, you do sense that awe. Uh, I think they were built for that reason, that very reason. And again, such amazing inspiration that humans have alone, sentient beings to, and the urge to create, to want to seek something higher than yourself and, and to, to do more than just the basic necessities of life, but to think deeper uh, upon the, the aspects of life and what makes us different on this planet. Thank you for that beautiful compliment. I mean, <laughs> I, I give all glory to God. If there's anything good that anyone sees me doing or sharing, it's because his glory He's allowing it to, to somehow emanate through me. Love is at the core of everything I do. I try to just stay connected to, to inspiration. And Joe and I met each other through Facebook. And like I, I, I talked about earlier, Facebook has been such an incredible blessing in my life. Uh, first of all, because I get the chance to stay connected to my family um, that's in Europe on a daily basis, but also all of the inspirational, amazing, talented, and diverse people, uh, even non-artistic people that I've met and people who support music and, and encourage me and keep me going. It's just amazing. It's such a, a wonderful, wonderful blessing that we are able to live in this day and age where we have this technology that, of course, especially now with with all of the lockdowns, even still in Ontario, that we've been able to stay connected and been able to uh, continue to, to share the things that are important to us. And I approached Joe, I think I met him or I found him on Facebook through another musician friend. Uh, maybe I was, I think maybe they were on a compilation YouTube video of, of epic film cinematic type music. And his music, wow, I mean, it just like, it struck me it was like a just a, a lightning bolt and I just I maybe it was God I, I felt like this urge send him a friend request and he accepted it and I've been you know keeping an eye on his music and uh, I approached him about a piece that I feel the Lord inspired me with uh, called Amatavitam that I have yet to share. And it, it's kind of an anthem um, of peace to the world. And I, I recorded, I can't, was driving home one day from, from my day job back in maybe 2015. And I had this melody come to me and I was like, Oh, that, what, what is that? That's neat. I mean, I have these moments and this is really strange because I, I call it tuning in. I'm all, almost like tuning in like a radio to a frequency. All of a sudden I hear it and I can hear, sometimes I can hear thoughts. Sometimes like I, I, I'm, a person is put on my heart and then literally they're gonna, they write me or they call or something happens or something happens in even the news or it's strange. <laughs> That's a different story. <laughs> but um, I had that melody and I luckily I had my cell phone and I pulled over and I, recorded this 
little melody. And I went home and I felt like I needed to write the lyrics in Latin. So I started writing, uh, looking, you know, doing the research and, and uh, found these beautiful lyrics. And I had previously written something in Latin that I collaborated on a, a piece called Lux Tua, which means your light. I, I wrote the lyrics and I did the vocals for this wonderful electronic dance music um, operatic crossover that I did with uh, Joseph Borg. He also goes by Hibernate and he and I uh, did this wonderful collaboration and video and it ended up first it originally was on his album Alpha Milk Recordings and then Paul Oakenfold, the great, he's, he both uh, does producing and DJing and, and composing of um, electronic dance music. He's been around for a really long time. Well, through some other people in the industry, they heard this song and it ended up being signed on to Perfecto Records um, uh, label, which is uh, pretty cool under his label. And, and he also did a remix of it. So you can check that out if you haven't had a chance. Uh, Lux to a L-U-X and then T-U-A. And so that was the first piece I had written in Latin. And so this other piece came to me. I just felt like Latin was just such a beautiful, expressive language. And it's, it just rolls off the tongue so beautifully, like a lot of the Latin languages do. You know, Italian and French and German are, are also beautiful languages and, that I love to sing in. But I started writing it. So anyway, I approached yeah. Joe Blankenberg with little piece that I had written and it was just an acapella version of of the melody and I sent it and I wrote you know it would be amazing to work with you I'd love to see this orchestrated one day I don't know if you'd ever be interested but you know it'd be it'd be really fun to to keep in touch and to um to talk about music at some point and he wrote me back and and said it was really lovely and uh, he he would love to work with me at some point and you know sometimes when people say that kind of thing you think well that's amazing but nothing really happens, you know, it's sort of, maybe it wasn't meant to be at the time or, or uh, it just, things didn't line up correctly, but he said, I'll, I'll, I'll be in touch, you know, and then a few years, uh, maybe a couple of years went by and I just kind of kept in touch every once in a while, just said, Hey, how's it going? And, and finally he uh, wrote at some point and said he was uh, working on an album, uh, but he had another one he had to work on, but he, he, he was keeping me in mind and he'd get back to me with some more details. And then all of a sudden one day he gets in touch with me and then he says, uh, yeah, I've got this vocal album I'm working on and I'd like to, you know, see if you want to work on a, a piece with me. Well, so he sent me one piece and it was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing, you know, music and, and just opened up a whole different realm of both vocal style and also just this like deeper music that really connected with me. I don't know why cinematic music, you know, there's a reason why I love movies so much is because the music is half the soul of the film, if not more. For me, it's part of the storytelling uh, aspect of it. And it creates the mood. It creates the, the again, the, the sort of the soul of the film. And it, it, it leads you emotionally in so many ways, both um, it can, you know, it can create intense, scary moments and it can lift you and it can sort of, it, it just has so much power, I think. And so, I was very intrigued by this opportunity to maybe uh, sort of experiment with different vocal styles. And, you know, I'm operatically trained, so I think he, he sort of wanted me to approach it in a different way, uh, maybe with less vibrato and try to sort of blend in with the instruments a little more. And so I thought that was kind of cool, you know, and, and I really liked it. It was fun. And uh, OK, so he, he goes, well, I have another piece. And then it went from one to two to three to four to uh, five pieces and I thought wow this is you know amazing this is so much fun and we, we were really having a great little time you know sort of chatting back and forth about ideas and he says well could you try this and could you you know would you be open to trying that and sort of exploring these different things uh on this album with him and I it's been just such a fun process and so I was very blessed that he allowed me to be a part of this and uh so those four, five pieces actually originally, one of them is going to be uh, positioned on a future film noir album that he's doing. I guess um, he and the publisher really wanted it um, on Sentience, but felt that it might actually be more ideal for this other album that has pieces that sort of just seem to flow well with, with the emotion and the, the sound of that. So that's kind of exciting that even though it was like, oh, that was actually probably my favorite piece and I really wanted it to go on this album, but it's also something to look forward to and something really special that uh, he and his publisher wanted to include it on this other album. So I, I'm really excited about that. And 
we have two wonderful, very well established um, sort of epic cinematic um, vocalists, Uyanga Bold and Clara Soros on the album, and a wonderful violinist uh, that puts some amazing um, solos and, and violin, extra violin on uh, the album, Lindsay um, Deutsch, I believe she was pronouncing the, the name, or I guess Deutsch. Would you say that in? It should be Deutsch, but Deutsch. yeah, that's a German pronunciation. <laughs> She may say something different, but please forgive me, Lindsay, if I pronounced it incorrectly. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the, the ladies there uh, have incredible voices and you heard them as well. And wow. So this is quite a story, my love. So, so why don't you like share with us in terms of what really is the meaning behind this one particular album, Sentience? What does it represent? Well, you have to ask Joe that for his for his deep evaluation and expression of it. But it was interesting because we were, I, I never really knew the theme of the album. I didn't even know the title until just before he released everything. Um, just a couple of weeks before, in fact. And so he started revealing on Instagram and on Facebook, this album cover. And he had little, just little sections of it showing. And, uh, the first little piece that he showed when he officially announced it was this, just this little part of a mountain. There was nothing unique about it. It was just this little kind of a cliffy mountain. And I just felt so excited and, and sort of like the clouds were, were lifting and the darkness was starting to dissipate in my life. And the, sort of there was this hope and this light that was was starting to break through the clouds and this feeling of lifting of your emotions and and this anticipation that was forming and brimming and uh so i you know i wrote something on my facebook page and joe wrote me and said wow i really like what you wrote i mean i think you you really tapped into the whole theme of this album and he says you don't even know what the album cover looks like and he, he sent me the album cover and it was this whole mountain with light springing up from inside of it and and I went whoa I mean it really sort of did seem like it was meant to be in that way and he says would you you know would you consider writing something um, elaborating on that and sort of writing something for the album and about it, uh, you know, sort of your inspiration. And I said, absolutely. And I don't claim to be a, a an established writer of any kind. I've just always loved creative writing and, and uh, sort of inspiration when I, when I wanted something, when I felt it needed to bless someone or encourage someone or create something. It's like, I just sit down and I start writing and it just, I feel like the Lord just blesses me and it just flows. And so I thought maybe I was going to do just a couple of sentences. I don't think he expected too much, but it turned out to be like a whole one page poetic story. And I cre even created a language called Krium, Krium. And I did this cool demo recording for him and I had like this language that I created and sort of whispering in the background and then I did this dramatic voiceover and <laughs> I think he was like whoa oh my gosh this is cool you know uh, but maybe we could just bring it down to a few lines and then uh, I want to share the whole thing and I think he's going to at some point but that sort of sparked the idea to take one of the pieces that I recorded vocals for and as an introduction he went to this amazing place and I won't give away all the the, the details, but it's this otherworldly looking place that he filmed in with his with his drone and oh it's beautiful. And then he had me sort of choose certain phrases in this story and to include that as a narration. So I'm doing sort of a, you know, I did a voiceover for for him where it's going to be sort of this dramatic introduction to this one piece that we did so anyway long story short that's going to come out soon and uh, again I'm blessed that he is you know wanting to to share something that I've created and I couldn't help but every time he would release one of these little teasers you know I just sat down and, and created some little inspirational quote to go along with it so it's really nice to be able to to take part in it both vocally and also with the writing so I'm very grateful to uh to Joe and he's he's just such a wonderful person and, and immensely gifted and is in tune 
to his source of inspiration on such a regular basis. It's like he just sits down and starts to write. And I'm constantly seeing new ideas and albums that he's coming out with. He says he's got two new ones that he's working on now. I mean, it's amazing. So I'm, I'm really glad to be a part of this and with these two other wonderful singers and, and Lindsay as well. And, and I'm sure there are many other people behind the scenes. So it's just this wonderful opportunity. And Sentience, back to that sort of what it means, Oh, it's a deep thing. I think we talked about it in our private conversation. You know, humans are uniquely blessed and gifted, I think, to be able to, to create. And I, I do believe that we were created with purpose and in the image of God. And, and he's the ultimate creator of the universe and all of the amazing diversity of life and things and sounds. And, you know, every bird has its own song. Every, every animal has its own language and communication and all of these things. And humans are so uniquely uh, gifted to be able to realize our own existence and our frailty and our mortality. And I do write some of those deep feelings and things in, in some of the stuff that I uh, included in that narration, which we look forward to sharing with you. Yeah, I think it just has to do with, again, sort of that quote that you brought up from, from my uh, website, you know, connecting music and spirituality. There's something deep within the human soul that seeks outside of itself, that seeks to connect with, with something bigger and greater than ourselves. And I think we're, we're the, maybe the only beings on earth that we know of that question our mortality, that question our, our existence and why are we here and what does it all mean? And is there a greater fabric that we're all woven into in, in both the relationships we have with nature and, and um, animals and, and all of the things around us? And I, I really love what he's brought out, all the different colors of emotions. I, I called it an emotive album. So it, it does sort of take you through a, a journey of emotions. And we as humans and our experience on this earth is never one-sided or one-dimensional or one color. It really is a path we go through where we experience valleys and peaks and highs and lows and, and different shades of emotions. And uh, I, I think that that album kind of brings that out. And I was blessed that the pieces that I was a part of, I kind of feel like they were, there's some really mysterious stuff going on. And then there's the, the, the pieces that I was blessed to sing on. I feel almost just like that little ray of light that sort of breaks through those clouds and starts to stir that up. And I, I've just heard so many wonderful people describing their feelings when they listen to the music and that it, it both inspires them and it sort of takes them on an adventure. So it's a deeper discussion, I guess, in regard to the <laughs> what goes into it. And I really think the composer is the best one to talk about that. But he was very kind and said, you know, go ahead and, and, and chat about uh, the, the story. And I'd love to be able to read it to you guys one day, but uh, maybe he'll, uh, he'll share that and uh, we, can, we can have a, a continued conversation, but it's all about the music and the feelings that we have when we listen to music and, and it transporting us somewhere, even out of our daily life, even for just a little bit to some fantastic fairy tale place. It really can elevate us, I think it can make a really big difference in our lives if we listen to the right type of music and that we, we take in the right messages. Absolutely. So this was a beautiful explanation of how it all started and evolved through it. And it's not even finished yet because there are still things to be released. So the mystery continues, but the album itself is all available on all major streaming platforms. So we certainly invite our audience to listen to it and enjoy it and delve into the magic of this amazing album and collaboration that you and Joe and the other two artists have been doing. So congratulations. This is amazing. Now, other than obviously the studio that you were building with Brian in the Wick. I also know that you are collaborating with many other artists as well. So if someone wants to follow you, Victoria, and I certainly hope that many of the audience will feel inspired and they do want to follow you, but what else is imminent in terms of coming out so that we can already 
<laughs> expecting it. <laughs> Well, I'm an independent artist. I have no record label or manager or agency behind me. So everything I do is sort of, you know, these divine little appointments and, and wonderful opportunities that come my way and just spring up like, like a little flower comes into, you know, breaks through the ground where you least expected it. So I don't have any imminent news about anything, but I have some things in the works. One was just presented to me recently, a director, producer in the States approached me about possibly singing on the soundtrack of their film that they've been working on. So I'm really excited about that. I think it will be wonderful. And I have also met through Facebook again, these wonderful people, all of these connections are really coming through Facebook. And I have to, to just thank everybody for being so open to me. And the ones that do write me back are, uh, a huge blessing and and I really appreciate it. I also met a wonderful singer, Jay Louis Dreff, and um, immediately fell in love with his voice. And this producer director that wants me to sing in the film actually got in touch with me and we had a conversation over Zoom uh, around Christmas. And we, we talked about possibly doing something as a duo, you know, or singing a duet. And I was immediately inspired and I actually sat down and within an hour had a, a duet, a fully written duet for us. And uh, I just presented that recently to Jay, uh, at least the lyric portion of it. And the reception was very warm. So I look forward to us uh, hopefully working on that in the near future and, and seeing that fully produced. I need to get a little bit more of the, the music structure in there and then uh, I'll be looking for some uh, someone to help me orchestrate it. So it'll be it'll be exciting. He's a wonderful new artist and uh, such a, uh, a wonderful voice and talent and such a sweet person as well. I think we're, we're going to have fun and I look forward to the border being opened up so that we can do some concerts together. I'm hoping that that will will happen in the near future. They're usually uh, based out of Buffalo, New York. So that's about two and a half hours from where I am. I've been trying to release a lot of things that have just been sitting on the computer, you know, for whatever reason you, you don't feel that it's ready to be put out there or that it just, you know, maybe it was meant for a CD and it never really happened. It didn't, <laughs> nothing, just, I've had a very sort of, you just like a tossed salad of, of life experiences. <laughs> I have rarely for the pieces to fall into perfect place. So I just have to sort of take things as they come along. And that's where the adventure comes in and, and that sense of, of uh, adventure and being spontaneous and just being open-minded, open-hearted and just knocking on doors. And that's really all we're meant to do is just knock on doors and, you know, you can't force anything to open. This is the same that goes for people uh, in relationships with love, with friendship, with any kind of working relationships. You know, if it's meant to be, they will open the door. They will say, come on in. And it won't be a, a struggle. I think it'll just naturally fall into place. And so the things that are happening right now are very exciting that they just seem to be, you know, falling into place. And usually, you know, when you're in a, a, a positive state of mind and of love and um, gratitude, I do believe that there is great power in that and, and um, blessing that starts to unlock maybe previously closed doors. When we're ready, it will come and it will happen. So I've, I've had to give myself over to really uh, my faith and just to say, okay, I, I trust the plan and whatever's going to happen is going to happen when it's meant to happen. And um, I may have had grand ideas, uh, uh, you know, from being a, a young child of traveling the world and singing with orchestras and in opera and all these things. And, you know, you just, your life takes so many twists and turns. You just have to, uh, and it doesn't always pan out the way that that you imagine and in the timing, but I do have to believe, and I do believe that, you know, it's, it's going to happen the way it's meant to happen and just enjoy the ride, <laughs> be along for the ride and try to embrace every opportunity, every learning opportunity and take the good with the bad. And, um, but just always be grateful for your gift of life because it, it is so rare and precious and um, we can very easily be overcome and feel overwhelmed with the things that are happening, the cares of the world. So that's where I find a great ex escape in music. And this project with Joe has been such a positive encouragement and something to, to look forward to. I'm very grateful. This is beautiful. 
So, Victoria, if others have found you just as amazing as I think that this interview turned out to be, my love, then would you mind please share your contact information, anything that people can get hold of you and connect with you, learn more about you, collaboration opportunities, anything? Go ahead, please. You're so very sweet and God bless you. I'm so appreciative of you reaching out and wanting to talk with me today. And I can't wait to get together with you and really sit down and have a chat um, face to face. I don't have my contact lenses in right now. <laughs> That's another story. And I didn't want to wear my glasses. So I'm, you're a little bit fuzzy. <laughs> I don't know what's too close to the camera. So anyway, yeah, I wear glasses, guys. Okay. I have my website, victoriaguida.com, and there is a contact page on there, and you can easily reach out to me there, and it will go through to my personal email. And I also have my Facebook page, my professional uh, Victoria Guida Soprano page, and that has messaging op options there that you can reach me at, and my personal Facebook page. I'm, I'm quite approachable, as long as people are uh, not looking for a date. <laughs> you know, you get these funny Facebook messages once in a while. Um, that are hilarious. <laughs> but uh, anything professional, I usually also discuss it with my my husband. He is a, uh, a good sounding board for, for other things that are coming through the pike. So I, I tend to share them with him as well. And we discuss things, but I, I'm pretty much the decision maker, which is fun because I, I, I do believe that I, I have a pretty good sense of of when something is, is uh, a good fit for, for what I want to do. And again, I'm just looking forward to collaborating with people on wonderful, positive, encouraging, uh, light-filled messages. Yeah, I think I, I, when I have the option, I always lean towards the light, hope-filled messages. Again, I feel a responsibility uh, to honor God and to honor the life that I've been given and the, the wonderful opportunity to share love and, and inspirational messages with people so thank you and all of your viewers for their time i'm sure this is a long conversation and maybe many left 25 minutes ago <laughs> but uh we hope you check out the album all the information is on joe blankenberg's website joeblankenberg.com and also on his facebook page and uh yep you can listen on all the platforms to snippets uh there's some samples on youtube as well and we look forward to sharing some exciting videos coming up in the near days and some wonderful projects on the way lots of little bells are ringing in the in the distance i can hear them and i i'm i'm waiting and grateful for anything that comes my way any beautiful souls that want to collaborate like you <laughs> thank you annie for your time Thank you so and much, Victoria. It was such a pleasure. Thank you. I look forward to reading your books. <laughs> Thank you, my love. Have a good day. You too. Bye. With your